All right, guys, so with this cut, um, uh, the implements that we're going to be using is going to be the razor and the shears, your cutting comb, and for today, we're using one, two, three, four clips, okay? And first things first, let's think about how to use this razor. Now, this razor, when you use it, okay, it looks like this right here, and we have this guy, you're going to take your ring finger, this is one option, where you can take your ring finger and place that guy right inside here, prop your pinky on the pinky tank, and you can use it to work it this way, okay? Another option is to take the razor and hold it and use it like this. So what I mean by that is take a look. You hold it like this right here. So it's going to make a little bit more sense when I go in and start working with my mannequin, okay? And then we're going to use our shears, and we're going to use our shears as regular. So when we get ready to do this haircut for the exam, normally when you do the 90-degree haircut, um, you pick one. Okay, I pick my razor or I pick my shears. But for the exam, they kind of they, they're not going to have the opportunity or the time to watch you do two separate haircuts. So during this time, we're going to show them that we a know how to use the razor properly and b know how to use the, sh the shears properly. And when I say properly, I mean safely. So they're not looking at technique, but they are looking at safety. Okay, and so this is the first time that Cos 112 has on this haircut. I'm going to go at a slow pace, and I'm going to do every single thing. So, y'all, I'm not speeding up the camera, unfortunately, because I think it's going to be important that you guys kind of see, okay? But anyway, um, let's get started with section, and we're going to do the four-section party. Now, with this, you guys already know how to do the four-section party. But I'm going to do it again anyway. And that is, we're going to do a profile part down the center. All the way to the nape. And I know you guys see me um, in class when we're doing the haircut. I usually go to the nape. When I get to the nape area, I look for that peak in the back so that I can get it centered properly. Now, one thing about haircutting, this is going to give you that balance that you're looking for on both sides. So that's why I'm just kind of making sure that this is, um, for the most part, even back here. Now, I like complete saturation, so I'm going to go back in here and wet my, my client up just a little tad bit more. You're going to see there's a time for dry cutting and a time for wet cutting, but pick one. <laughs> pick one. Don't be in, in between damp and end up with an uneven cut. You all right over here, Miss Janice? Now, the next one, we're going to do a radial part. Apex down to behind the ear, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And we are clipping, sectioning the hair for control. Okay, since I'm over here, it's easier for me to go ahead and clip this guy out the way now. But what I am going to do, just to kind of, since I have the hair and I don't want to have to take it back down, I'm going to go ahead and take a fourth of an inch subsection out. For my guide. Okay, a fourth of an inch. Sometimes we go thicker, sometimes we do half an inch, sometimes we do one inch. When we're doing blunt haircuts, we tend to um we tend to go a little bit thicker. Okay, but it it also depends on the density of your client's hair. Um now I know you guys looked at quite a few videos about the 90 degree haircut a few weeks ago. Okay. And they did it quite a few different ways. They did, there were quite a few different ways that they did that haircut. Um, I am going to start at the nape area. Okay. I'm going to start the nape. I'm not doing a mohawk down the center. Um, and do and I'm not going to do pivots. Okay, I'm going to I'll pivot once I get to the top and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now I'm going to keep it nice and simple. And treat this baby just kind of similar to how we did the, the 45 as far as parting is concerned. Like I said, normally I, I prefer to do a five section party, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this baby for this exam to save you just a little bit, tad bit of time, okay? All right, fourth of an inch, fourth of an inch. We got four sections right here, and we are getting ready to get started using this razor. All right, now when we are using this razor in the back, 
wet you up a little bit more. The razor tends to, if you if the hair is not completely wet, if you try to use the razor dry, it's gonna pull and tug and it's gonna sound eh, like you're pulling and tearing up the hair, okay? So we wanna make sure that when we are using this razor, we are using a fresh blade, okay? There's a time and a place for a dull razor, just not at the exam and not today. <laughs> um, dull razor can mess up the hair. Um, you can pull up the hair, tug it, the hair in the clock will fill it, okay? So I'm using a new blade, and now I'm going to start off using this guy down the center. And I'm going to show you a few different um, a few different ways you can hold this razor. Now, because we are doing a blunt cut, okay, because we're going to do our guide blunt, I'm going to come down, and for safety reasons, I want to make sure that my razor is above my finger, not below, okay? I want to make sure that it is above, at the top up here, okay? Not down here, okay? So when I cut, I'm going to cut this way right at the top, okay? I'm going to cut above my finger. So this is what I mean. I'm going to do just like I have about a one-inch section in the center, okay? A one-inch section in the center. Let me turn my baby around so y'all can see her just a little bit. And she look a little outside. Let me get you standing up, honey, Okay? All right, so I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to bring my fingers down, and I'm going to cut my client to, for you guys, you're going to measure down here, because you're going to say, decide if you're going to just ensure that you're taking off one inch. For me, I'm going to take off just a little bit more, because I know that my top is only at five inches, okay? So when you guys come to the exam, you already need to know your shortest length on your mannequin head, because throughout the entire haircut, you have to cut at least one inch off. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead. I know that this is my shortest piece is at the center up here because the 180 was done on her. So I see that she's at five inches. I'm going to check back here. She's had a lot of stuff done to her. She's at six inches back here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my client down to four inches. Okay, and let me just double check and make sure there's no other shorter pieces than five. Yep, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to... Bring my baby to four inches, okay? So I'm going to bring, take my sheet, my razor, and I'm going to place it above my finger. And I'm going to, if you can see, I have it kind of on a slant, and I'm going to move it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that, okay? And what you're going to get is kind of a jagged edge a little bit, okay? So I'm going to clean that up just a little bit more. Okay? And then I'm going to come over and do the rest. Okay, and all I'm doing is cutting a guide. Okay. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Same thing on this side. Hmm, thought I had a new blade. It's not quite new. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to check both of my pieces to make sure that they are even. Okay? And once I can see that they are even, come over here and clean my baby up a little bit more. She's a little bit longer over here. All right, once they're even, then I'm going to continue on with my haircut. One key thing about this, now there's a few different things you can do to palm. I can palm like this. Okay, take it, palm it down. Okay, for me, I and you can just palm it down right like this right here. Okay, cut what you need, palm her down. Okay, or you can take it and face her this way right here and palm so that it's not facing this way, but it's more secure if you're able to just drop that baby like this right here. Okay, so I'm going to come up one inch. I'm at one inch on both sides. Sorry if my ponytail keep getting in the screen, y'all. And 
And when I come up, now I'm going to be cutting vertically. Okay, so instead of cutting horizontally, now I'm cutting vertically. So I'm going to come down the center once again. But when I hold this, my first option is this. Okay, now you want to make sure that your subsections are no wider than one inch. Okay, so that you um, don't end up with an, uh, over directing some of those subsections. So here with a 90 degree angle, 45, we were bringing down. Okay, and I'm going to give you guys, um, I'm going to switch to a slightly different angle in a minute. But here, if you can see here, 45, we held here. Okay, with our 90, we're going to bring it straight from the head. So I'm going to take my fingers and place them in and bring it straight out. Okay. And that's my 90 in the nape section. It does have a slight tilt to it just because the head does dip down slightly. Okay. But if we go down too much, we're going to leave the hair too long and we're going to end up creating more of a 45 and it's going to be a little bit thicker down here. So we want to make sure that this hair is free flowing. It is going to look pixie. It's going to look kind of, some of y'all might not like it. Some of you might like it. Okay. So let's get started in this guy. So I'm going to bring it up. Now, if you see down here, that little piece right here at this bottom, that's my guy. Okay. So I'm going to use that to, um, for for this piece up here to cut but what with the way that i'm going to do it now this i'm going to need this piece to kind of fall out okay so just take a look at it i'm going to hold it i'm going to pull my fingers out towards me until the hair falls out and now i know because it fell out that it is time for me to cut so i'm going to put my razor in front of my on this on the right side of my finger and i'm going to go back and forth Okay, holding the hair with my fingers. Okay, now if you are left handed, this is what that's going to look like for you. Mm. Now, I'm not going to cut nothing, but I am going to at least show you how to hold it. Okay, if you're left handed, drop that baby this way. You're going to take your comb and you'll be on this side. Okay, fingers got a little weak. Um, and release that baby and you would cut right in there okay palm this guy and then you'll be ready to do your next section so I'm going back to my right hand okay and I'm going to come over just like we normally do with our haircut I'm going to take my next section I'm going to split this baby in half and I'm going to work on my right side first okay and I'm going to come over here I got some of the the hair that I just cut and then I want some of my new hair. And I can actually see I got it at the bottom and I got it at the top. Okay. Okay. So when I do this, I can see I got it at the bottom and I got it at the top. Okay. Now, I could also take my shears. Excuse me, I'm not palm. I could also take this guy and I could come from the top down to the bottom like this. So, I see my guy. And I come down this way. Okay, that's the option. I prefer the side. That's just me personally. And did you hear that little tear? My hair is a little dry and my razor is just a smidget dull. Okay, it's just a smidget dull. Just a little bit dull. Alright, so now that I'm combing the hair, I want to make sure I have this guy palmed. And I'm going to move over to the other side. Not the other side. I want to keep going. Can't see my guy, my subsection was too thick. So I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller. Get a little bit more of my guide over here. Because y'all know how I like to kind of do a little diagonal part just a little bit. Just to 
have a guide at the top and a guide at the bottom to ensure that I'm even on both sides. This side and that side is what I mean, top and bottom. One, thing, one reason why I don't like coming down from the top, because sometimes my finger tilt in and I make the top too too short, okay? So it, it kind of forces, sometimes I do this and tilt in. So you just want to be mindful of how you're holding this guy. And you kind of see that I have it like on the side. I'm not going straight into it. And what I mean by that is I'm not doing this. All right, so I, I, I'm starting on my left side, this side over here. Okay, I get that center. So let me up here. And my guide is on my right side. So I kind of have to shift just a little bit, okay? Y'all catch that? I just shifted just a little bit. And that's just a little too thick. I can't quite see it. And I'm getting a little dry in here. So I'm just going to dampen that up a little bit. All right. There's my guide at the top there and my guide there. Okay. So I'm going to take this baby and come in here and get the cut. <laughs> Come in this guy, similar to the 45. Like I said, the elevation is just different. And I'm standing kind of weird, guys, to make sure that y'all can see me, okay? My body will pay for it later. <laughs> All right, so you see how I kind of flatten this out? And then I can see my guy at the top and my guy at the bottom. And for me, I'm just going to... Do this right here. There she is. All right. Now I'm going to cross check, okay? I'm going to start on this right side and just work my way over to the left, cross checking. And I am going to hold this baby straight out at a 90 degree, degree horizontally. And I, and, come on. All right, and I'm just checking to make sure that all is well. All right. So I got a little something going on right here. I'm going to go back in into this area and just check it out again. And it is a razor, so it is going to be slightly jagged. I do expect to see some shorter pieces and some longer pieces, okay? But I just want to go back and kind of clean that area up there. So, I'm a little longer over here on this side. Let me just come back over here. And I'm going to fix that. So, I'm going to go back over to my other side. I just pulled on a piece of hair. I'm sorry. Clean it up. All right. So, I'm going to come back over to this side right here and just double check my work. And I'm going to kind of change how I was holding the hair. And go back to my original way. There she go. Now, sometimes you might hear folks do or do what you call potato peel. I'm not going to do that so that we will... Be all good for the exam. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. Uh-huh. So this is what you might see people do. Don't do it. <laughs> not for the exam. It's not wrong when you even watch the their video for the feather raiser. Some of the educators actually do that. Okay, but we just don't want to get in the habit of doing it for the exam. All right, so now I'm going to continue on. I'm going to work my way up. One inch. Okay, I might have a few more 
Got one or two more sections to use with this raisin, and then I'm going to move on with my shears, okay? And we're going to continue this. Working our way up this head. Now, as we move, this is straight out right here, okay? 90 degrees. Right here. Ah, she... Yes. All right. Green, we're coming this baby. So, not so new blade. Gonna do better next time. And these corners, I like to kind of show you the corners as we're working these corners because right in here, I don't make sure we're not dragging it over out of its subsection okay keeper and that's my little slant my little it kind of gets a little bit wider i like to have that 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 um that piece at the top and the piece at the bottom so when i flatten her out i have a piece here piece there got there at the top and got at the bottom okay let me turn her this way got at the top got at the bottom so i like to do that but i really want you guys not to pull it out of the um out of its you want to cut in front of where you are holding it okay i don't want to shift her shift it out of that position okay out of that area so now we're going to work on this corner right here i don't want to drag this over it's going to make my sides too long so i want to make sure that i am standing or holding the hand my body is shifted i'm not cutting like this right here because it hurt my body but i am going to shift a little bit and hold my arm but i don't want to move so i'm holding the hair I'm holding it right in the area. I don't want to move it here or move over directly there or it's going to make one side too long, okay? So I want to make sure that when I'm holding that hair, I am holding it from where it's growing. And then I'm going to flatten this baby out, holding it at a 90 degree angle. I see my God, I see my God. And here I am. All right, so now I'm going to go to my next section. I'm going to continue up, and then we're going to switch on to our razor. I mean, excuse me, our shears. So we're going to come slightly, um, kind of to the occipital bone, just a little bit past the occipital bone. Okay. So I'm Miss Janice. Ooh. Didn't mean to pull your hair like that. Now, at some point, I do like to go ahead and, and end up with one clip back here. Some point. Come on. <laughs> 90. Straight out. My God. 
Now, I can get very particular with this cut, but I ain't going to do that for y'all today. Now, when I start moving up with my shears, you're going to see I'm going to get just a little bit more particular, but it's all good. All right, because I can just throw my comb right there and see there I am at four inches, and bada bang, bada bang, I will be even. Okay, it's, this is, tends to be where we tend to get a little bit longer because um, of elevation. So when I need to double check and when I have shorter hair and I can do it, I go ahead and kind of peep at it with my razor, not to, I mean, not with my ruler, not to say sit here and measure every single strand, but I can if I wanted to. <laughs> I can if I wanted to because that's the beauty in a 90 degree haircut. If I prop this comb right here, okay, look at that beauty, 90 degree cut, 90 degree angle right there. Um, in this space right there, 90 degree angle, boom, 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 right there, okay? So I know I'm holding it accurately. There are some things you can do to ensure that, okay? And that is one of the techniques I like to use. When in doubt, measure. But you, like I said, it's going to slow you down, so you don't want to spend your entire haircut measuring. Guys can see, got it at the bottom, got it at the top, everything in between, got to go, got to go. Follow me, Miss Jenny. Follow me. <laughs> Make sure that has a nice and clean comb at the root area. Okay. And I see a guy here and I see a guy here. So I know that it's correct. And I am anything in between I'm going to take out. Come on back here, baby. <laughs> All right. Next section. Keep going. Half that. And if you want to keep it clean so you can really see, you can just move it over out of the way. Okay. And remember, you don't have to pick up all that hair. I'm only picking up two inches of hair from here to here, okay? And you see how the rest of the hair I'm not picking up? God, God, everything in between get cut out. And last piece on this side. Move that out the way. God, God. God, God, you can see that or not. Okay, drop it out, and then you cut. So you, the pieces actually fall out, and then you cut. Okay, the pieces fall out, and then you cut. And now, let's come on to this other side. Honey, you're shagging out, you're shagging out. And that's, honestly, that's the point of this haircut. It's, it's a... um. I'm not gonna say just shaggy is extremely layered because there it creates movement okay it creates movement now I'm, cu I'm cutting from underneath now so I was cutting at the top now I'm bringing my finger underneath so you guys can see okay but give me one second I just need to make a slight adjustment here mannequin is getting a little loose all right All right, so I had to get real back up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come back where I left off at. Come back to the center. And like I said, now that I'm up cutting the other side, I am cutting the hair. I'm holding the hair from underneath. Okay, that is an option. Okay, if you hold it from underneath, then I can cut on this other side right here. This is so I can see my guide on my right side because I'm cutting on the left. And that's what my guide is. The guide is the previously cut hair. So it is your rule. It is your measure. Come on. Where my guides go? Did I cut that whole section? Y'all, I dropped down. My bad. I dropped down a section. I hadn't even cut my other side. So give me a minute. Let me get caught up on this side. You see what just happened? So if that ever happens to you, basically, I looked on this side and realized I just cut my right side and not the left. So now I'm going to go when I move, remove some of that hair from up there. And I'm just going to come in here and finish cutting this other side right here. And then I'm going to work my way up. 
There go my baby. That's what I was looking for. Okay. You see how both of them fell out? Come on, stop, chat. Drop a little bit of that out. Okay. And there we are. So this is something that you really might encounter at the exam. Okay, and it's okay. Just make your subsection smaller um, right in here. And just divide it up and finish that section you might may have forgot. Okay. All right, now I'm ready to cut this little piece right here. <laughs> And then I'm going to cross check that entire area, okay? Because that is what, because I didn't cut that side, that's what I did not do. And it's something funny, um, not funny, but it's like we find ourselves sometimes on that non-dominant side, kind of, I'm leaning, so I'm trying to find my balance with this uh, screen right here, but at the end of the day, I'm going to come back in here to this area, because I feel like I'm getting a little longer, and I just want to double check my work, so I'm going to come in here and just double check. All right, I got some work to do in there, y'all. Got a little work I got to do. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting, and then I'm going to go back in and cross-check, okay? Where did I leave off? Let's see. But I could kind of feel that, okay? I could feel that, and it was in my elevation. And what basically, guys, I'm at hitting at that occipital bone, and so I'm hitting that curve. And so some of this, well, my issue that I'm having is going to be resolved when I go to my next section. Echo my baby right down there at the bottom. All right. Don't be like that. Got right there. So I want to make sure my fingers are doing what they're supposed to be doing and not getting all longer on me. I'm going to start in the center because I know my center is accurate, okay? And work my way from left to right and then left from here, right to left, okay? But I just want to double check and make sure, okay, you're good, that I'm not getting, and like I said, with that razor, it will be a little jagged and there will be shorter and longer pieces. That's the point behind the razor. But I don't want it to be so jagged that I can't, that, I, that I'm cutting at, here we go, that I'm cutting at, um, cutting it like an inch longer. No, that's what I don't want to do. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and correct my corners because my elevation got a little off in these corners. Okay. And this dull razor is not helping at all. Okay. So now I'm going to come back, come back to, to here and work my way over there cross-checking, okay? So these, like I said, these are issues that you might face, challenges, challenges that you might face. And 
And this is how you're going to fix that and balance your work out so that you don't move on to the next section without taking care of this because all it's going to do is create and here it is right in this area here. Normally we don't cut this way. We normally go back in and find the piece, but I like to kind of cheat a little bit there and it kind of shows me how I need to position my finger. Okay. So it's a little harder when you're cutting little tiny pieces. Now at the exam, if that was your issue, it will be okay for you to go back in and use, they let you use your shears throughout um, as long as you use the razor or third, third of the cut. So if you get find yourself in a position where you're cleaning up your work at the exam and you're still using your razor, put that razor down and I want you to pick up your shears and I want you to clean your work up. Now what I'm doing, I'm point cutting mine. You don't have to do it that way. I'm just kind of texturizing my ends. I just need to get a little bit of length off. So I'm going to come in here and just clean up just a little bit with my shears. It's not a lot. And, 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 and why I say that is that here we go. Okay, right in this area right there. And I'm just going to point cut just a little bit. Just, that's all I need to take off. Because when you're fine that when you're using your razor, when you get this tiny, tiny little small pieces, it's hard to hold it like this and get anything off now when i use the razor if i don't want to go back and forth with my sheet with my um back and forth with my shears i will use this technique what i call potato peeling it's like you take the hair and you're folding it on the side and you're pulling and you're pulling and you're pulling but we're not going to do that at the, at the exam so that's why i tell you guys to go ahead and pick up your shears if you need to so what that would look like if i was Easy. What that will look like if I was doing that this way, it would be like that right there. Okay, the razor, the hair lays on the side, and you pull. So you're hold, you're not laying it here. You're laying it on the side. Place the hair and do that right there. So it's really nothing for me to take off there. Okay, so that would be something that you can do in the salon, not at the exam. Pick up your shears if you have small pieces to do. Okay. All right, so that was my last section with my razor. Now I'm going to go into using my shears, okay? Now here, guys, I'm over using two clips right now, okay? So for me, I'm going to switch out to using one um, clip, okay? So so I just, I'm just going to use one clip back here. And, after, and let's see how far, how this goes, because I might even drop my size down. Let me see how I'm going up one inch. And yes, I am going to drop my size down now. So I'm going to use one clip back here now. If you still need to see your center, keep it clipped. Okay? So if you need to know where the middle is at, then you need to keep it in two clips. For me, I know where the center is. So for if you know where the center is at, I can, I'm kind of gauging it off of the top part up here. So I'm going to close this up. Okay? Those two clips are kind of slowing me down, clipping here and clipping there and winding there. So I'm going to drop it and just use one clip, okay? And so not only am I dropping down these guys, but I'm also going to go ahead now, and you see how that is right there? I'm going to go ahead and drop. It's enough height for me to drop down my side. Now, I know I'm way over 30 minutes. Normally, I would have this hair cut, okay? But because I'm teaching this versus doing it as an exam, I'm going a little bit slower. I'm talking. I'm doing a whole bunch of extra stuff. So, today is not going to be 30 minutes. It's going to be longer. But this guy can be, trust me, it can be done in 30 minutes. It's just I have to go over some other information with you guys now. Since you, um, Cos 112, you have not completed this cut yet. And my little mannequin head is a little wobbly again on me. All right. All right, now it's time to rock and roll. So y'all know how to hold the shears, 
Bada bing, bada bang. Okay, this is for comfort for you guys. Uh, or ergonomic, holding it ergonomically correct. So now, at this 90 degree angle, head is propped up. When we're in this area right here, when I hold it, the hair, I'm going to rotate us over just a little bit more. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. Now, normally I don't quite hold it this way, but I'm going to do it now so that you guys can see a little bit better for me or see a little bit better. So, uh, unfortunately, it's going to cause me to overextend my arm, but I would rather do that just so you guys can kind of see how I'm holding this. Okay. Straight. Well, not like that anyway. I'm going to cut past my second knuckle, so I'm going to switch my alright, so we're going to pick back up where we left off at, now I can move my client's head at this point, I can hold it at a 90, so I like to I will tilt, I know with our blunt cut we did not uh, move the head but I am going to move my client's head at this point okay And this is better for me now, okay? And I couldn't see that top guy like I like to see. So I just went back in and repositioned. There we go. And I didn't see that guide again, so I'm making this just a tad bit thinner. And there's my guide at the top, my guide at the bottom. Everything in between can come right on off. Kind of pivoting around. There's my God. There, there. Now at this point, guys, because we are also preparing God, God, for the practical exam, this is when I would just go ahead and prepare. I'm not even going to So I can go ahead and cut my side, okay? Now I am going to tilt her head back up because I'm going to cut my side even. One length. So I'm not elevating this part. So I'm going from my back. Normally we would stop here work the other side, and then cut the sides, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now for time's sake, okay? And I'm bringing this guy flat, and I'm going to cut it straight across, okay? So I can come in here with my shear. All right, and I'm going to take that guide. Make sure my fingers are straight. And I want to cut this across. There it is. Make sure my fingers are straight. And I want to come straight across. Now, that's back out. So there's my shag. <laughs> there's the shag. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the start with this side and work my way all the way over. And once again, these are little time savers for the exam.
So when I do, when I have my God at the top of my God at the bottom, and guys, remember, on this next one, I got to make sure that I cross check, okay? And I, not only am I going to cross check, but I also have to check my sides. And I'm going to readjust them, cut two inches right here, and I have a little bit more than two inches, so I'm going to readjust my finger, and bada bang, bada bang, there we go. But remember, clean. And I like, like I said, when I get to my, in this area, I like to kind of pivot just a little bit. Straighten my fingers on up. Readjust my fingers. And boom. Here, here, so I fan this baby up, fan her on up, flatten her out, guide, guide, okay? And now, same case scenario, I'm going to come over just a little bit more, closer. Come on, got to loosen it. That's all I can do. All right, so I'm going to flatten it back out. All that just to have to flatten it back out. All right. Boom, four. Finger straight. All right, and now. Now, we're going to come in here and cross check. And I feel like my left side is just a little bit longer over here. And that is, it is longer over here. So I'm going to straighten her back up. Tighten her little neck back up. That just won't let me be great today. And fix this. Go and fix it. All right, so now, there we go. All right, so now we're going to keep on going. I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this cut off. I'm going to come in here, and then I'm going to work on another row, and I'm going to continue to do the same thing with my rows. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to drop this clip down, come up, my little shag right there, okay? Come up one inch. Drop my size down during this time. And I'm going to work a halo for the remainder of this cut until I get to the top. Or a horseshoe, not a halo, but a horseshoe. Gonna work a horseshoe. For video purposes, I'm tilting her, just making sure that when I come in here, I'm holding her at a 90 degree angle. Okay, 90.
readjust my fingers. Now, what you're going to see when we get to the sides are a few pieces that look like they should be cut uh, or they were cut. Um, it was kind of at a blunt. So that hair and how thick that section was, that excess hair that was that was um, because the subsection was thick, I'm going to cut that hair. So my guide is going to be that very, very bottom piece. This is what I mean. Okay, because I see a guide here, a guide there. Pop that back and boom, there's my four. So my guide is that small piece right down here. So I'm going to take that other hair there and cut that. We're just my fingers. There's my guide for the back. God is that little short piece right there. All of this other lovely stuff is getting cut out. Stuff, hair. Flatten her out so you can see that piece there, the shortest piece at the bottom. All of the excess hair that was is getting cut. Janice is getting tired. Lean it all forward. God, that little piece down there. God up here. A little too thick for me, so I'm going to split this baby in half. God, 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 all of this stuff that's been look like it's being cut that's getting cut on out. Okay, and the shag is evolving. Other side. <laughs> Forget about my left side, to be honest, y'all. Video. And guys, I wish I had a someone doing this, holding this for me so that I could um, get a few, <laughs> few better images, but that's okay. My body's going to shift just a little bit just so that I can um, hold the hair. I'm holding the hair from underneath at this point. I'm just trying to get y'all a better angle. I'm coming back to my other side, sorry.
There we are. How this is going to be. And we're going to keep this guy going, keep it going. Yep. And doing the same exact thing that we did on the other side. We're going to continue to keep it elevated because we already cut our guide on both sides. So now I'm elevating. And there's my guide. That little stuff inside here got to go. And I'm drawing out a little bit, so I want to give myself a little bit more water. God, God, I just like to see my top. That's basically my cross check, guys. I'm going to go through and cross check for this for you guys. But at the end of the day, when I cut on my angle, when I do my pivots, it does assist me for balance on both sides. So you see my hand kind of tilted a little bit. It does assist me with that. But if you don't want to pivot, you don't have to. And so that's why we're going to go through and cross check. There we go, God. God, the smallest piece down here. So not that piece is not my God. That is my God there. All right. Cross check. Good. 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 And good. And I just made a piece come down. Okay. So now I want to keep going over here and checking the other side. So we're hitting another curve, guys, okay? Because we're hitting a curve, I got to show y'all something. A little bit of something, just a little something, something to kind of help to ensure we don't start getting too long and end up at six inches or five inches at the top of the hair. And our um, length is basically at four inches, okay? Now, if you start getting too big in these areas, you're going to end up making it too long. So, I want to cut back to a half an inch instead of doing one inch. I'm going to cut back to a half an inch on all of my reference points. So, about a half an inch worth. We're kind of getting close to that parietal. We're at, actually at the parietal ridge. And this guy's going to continue on the same way. We are going to continue on going. Now here, I want to touch. So when I come in here to ensure that I am accurate, I'm going to place my hand at the scalp and just drag straight up. Now I want you to take a look at this. When I bring it straight up, I have two inches worth of hair in my hand. Now, down here at the bottom, that's my guide. But if you can see, there's about a half an inch worth of hair that's longer. I want to cut that because if I don't, it's going to end up causing the rest of the hair to be too long up top. So I got to make sure that when I I'm in a curve, in a reference point, 
it's going to, I have to kind of switch my direction. So here, I'm going to come in here and re-elevate my fingers, okay, to make sure that I don't end up making this area too long, okay? I hope that made sense. So here we go. We had a reference point. I'm going to put enough two inches worth of hair in my hand. And this is where I can see that peak at, okay? Because I had a guide that I just cut. So I'm going to use that little guide to help me out. And it's going to help me cut those little peaks out. So this is the peak I'm referring to. So if you see, I have short, and then it kind of gets a little longer, and then it goes back short. Okay? Short, a little bit longer, long, and then short. I'm going to align my fingers here and here. All of this stuff right here, got to go including that hair that I already cut. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to do it again. I got my pivot cutting on an angle. That's what I mean. Okay, slight angle. Now I'm going to come in here or diagonal. Slight diagonal. Flatten that hair out, fan it. When I draw my fingers up together, I see this is the same length as that. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Ninety, it's right in here. Now I know it looked like this is being over directed. It is. I already cut that hair, but I need to position to cut this one small little area that's on the the reference point. Okay, if not, like I said, it will make the remainder of the hair too long if I don't take that peak out and make sure that I cut, um, get that little area out. So fan the hair up. The area that I'm cutting is here. So this is no longer at a 90 because I'm not cutting that hair, but I need the guide at the end. So if you take a look, the hair that I'm cutting is from here to here. This hair has, in this area from here to here has already been cut. Okay. I'm cutting up here. So yes, this is over. That's okay. The area that I'm cutting is right in here. So with our 45 at this area, we was holding the hair here. We're not doing that. That's at a 90. That it will. We're, we were holding the hair here. Here, we're going to dip in and bring it there. Okay? That is the difference. So that we can cut more layers in here. Okay, so that the top can be shorter than it is with the than with the forty five. And keep on working your magic, guys. Keep on working your magic. Just keep going. Usually with this haircut, the issue is elevation, okay? So you see a lot of you guys are saying, well, Miss Avery, you're tilting the head. I can. 
I can because I know the surface of the head is my balance. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm basically, my finger position is in comparison to the scalp. So as long as I can find that scalp, I can find 90 degrees from the scalp, whether the head is bent down or sitting up. Now, when you're doing blunt cuts, it will affect your haircut. It will create an under, it will make this, if you if the hair is going forward, it will make it a little bit shorter. So you do have to be mindful of things like that when you are doing um, specific cuts like blunt cuts, okay? Got where I left off at. So let's see if it ha. I ain't got a guess because it's right here. And keep on keeping on. Work around, work around. I think that the, one of the uh, biggest things, I, well, not one of the biggest things, one of the things um, that you guys are going to find helpful, I think, is finding your body's balance. When you guys are um, doing your haircuts, it's truly finding balance with it because um, the body, Lord have mercy, the body will let you down. <laughs> um, you see how in some of these images I have my arm kind of up high. We want to make sure that your eye, you really want your, your arms close to your body. Okay. You want it as close to your body as possible. It's not going to be able to stand like this while you're cutting. But you really, you know, how some of the, the ways I am reaching out just because I my body is in the way of the video. But naturally when I'm working, um, you do want to be mindful of your elevation of your arm. Not being greater than 45 degrees for an extended period of time. And this is extremely repetitive at this point. But it's all about elevation. So it's not really about being repetitive as much as it is seeing the shape of the head and following that shape. So I do want you guys to catch that. Okay. That as I am working. And like I said, I tend to cut on a, on a diagonal. Um, so I apologize if every time I go through, I'm not cross-checking. I'm going to go back and do cross-check for this guy right here. But I, my, my um, diagonal kind of helps me out to be a little bit consistent on both sides. A lot of hair in my hand at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that. Boom. Come on back in. But I like to locate my guide so I don't end up getting too long. I mean too, um, yeah, the hair doesn't get too long. So I pick up a, quite a bit just so that I can see my angle and that I can see the guy at the top and the guy at the bottom. And then I will, once I cut some, readjust my fingers.
and we already know with palm and shears i guess i didn't cover it when i was working i'm um, talking but we already know that when we are cutting we can palm the shears well we need to palm the shears take our finger out thumb out and palm that baby So now, guys, I'm going to end up with one clip. Now that I have this halo left, I'm going to halo and halo and halo until I can't halo no more. Right. Since I'm over here, I'm going to knock out this side. I've been going from right to left, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and handle her. And remember, as we work our way down, I'm like guys, and, and I'm keeping her head leaning because it's working for me. It's been giving me a rough time. But so you guys can see what I'm doing. Her head is tilted. So I don't know if you can catch that. Let me follow Miss Janice. Bring her head back up for you guys so y'all can see. God.
and last piece. So now we're going to work the other side, and I'm going to continue to work that other side the same way that I just did this side, okay? And I'm going to continue to work it all the way around to the other side. Using my guide at the top and my guide at the bottom. Now my guide is on behind me, so hope y'all can are able to catch it in here. And it's pretty repetitive. Now, at the exam, when you guys go, we used to get penalized. If we cut past our second knuckle, guess what? It was unsafe. It was unsafe. So, we got points taken off. Now, they have um, adjusted some things, and you are no longer being penalized for cutting past your second knuckle. We don't encourage that. And what I mean is one, two. So, first knuckle, second knuckle. We were originally taught to just cut in here. You can have more hair in your hand. It's just on you if you get cut. You can get cut if you cut way down in here. Okay, you'll cut that area down there. All right, so we encourage you to only cut within this section right here and not to cut down way in here. You end up making a big spill, a big mess at this, um, when you're cutting, okay? So it's hard not to get greedy with the hair. Just readjust if you need to. And I don't see my back guy, so I'm pivoting. And this is a, a prime example when I mean a pivot, okay? You see how it kind of almost looked like a little triangle in here? That's a pivot, okay? My, got my consistent piece that I'm using here and I'm using it throughout to kind of make sure that it's going to be balanced. So I can hold it. So if you see here, 90 degree, but I'm holding it towards the face. So this piece towards right here towards the face is my guide. So here, okay, you see that? Now I'm gonna turn her back this way to the side just to make sure that I don't leave my front or anything too long. And I'm cutting back to that piece right there. Okay. And now I'm going to cross check and just make sure that all is well and that we are balanced on both sides. Okay. So I'm not bringing it here. That's 45. That's 90 in this area. You peep that? Straight from the head. Okay. Straight from the head. Straight from the head. Okay. Or scalp rather. And then I'm going to continue and do that around this way. That is the 90 in that particular area, that reference point. So a little bit above the parietal ridge. We're in the crown, right in there. But this area right here is just slightly above the parietal ridge. Okay. And we are good to go. I'm just going to do a little peep, 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 peep. And I'm going to check these little peep, these little corners right here, okay? Just to make sure... They are even. And I'm getting a little greedy on the other side. So I need to come back in here and just cross check. Come on, baby. The head keeps wobbling. I apologize. That's what's throwing me off in my little corners over here. All right, 
get carried away. And I did not. So now, you can do a few different things. But so that I can keep this guy pretty simple, I'm just going to go back and do horizontal lines, subsections, like this. And just keep working from here to here, from one side to the other. Let's just see what I'm doing here. Bring my head back. So her head is tilted towards the camera so you can see. Now if I hold it straight up, that might be better so you guys can see the angle that I'm holding it at. But with her head straight up, I'm going to place my hand flat. And look at that. Look at that. Straight up. Okay? Straight up. Boom, four inches. I'm going to let you see. I'm going to come in here and part like a little pivot. I want you to see what I'm doing here. Okay, guys. So I can go from the center here to center there. Or I can just go from this corner and work all the way over to the other corner. So I'm going to let you see what that looks like. It looks a little cleaner. So I'm going to come here if I do that. Okay, you see how I'm cutting on a slight angle? Because I want this hair, but I also want to have some hair that I already cut included in that. So this is the first piece that I'm cutting. And let me go find a guy because I don't see it. And I'm stopping doing those pivot because I'm at a flat place now. What about that? But the, if, if I do like a pivot and do like um, keep coming back to that point, that's my stationary area where I've established the, the length of the guide. And that's why I keep coming back to that point. That's going to ensure that both sides are balanced, okay? 
but or you could just travel from one side over to the other And just keep on working that magic over to the other side. So when I come over here, I want you to see. I want to do the same thing. My husband's shoes. I'm do the same thing right here. Okay. And I'm going to come down. Okay. Okay. And move that hair. I've already cut that hair there. Okay. And I want to make a vertical sub section here i have hair that i've cut there some hair that i cut over here and i have some new hair in here i included all of that to ensure that i have some balance going on all right so i'm going to cut there readjust my fingers and cut there and everything else is already being cut okay so now i'm just going to double check in this little corner and make sure all is well i already cut this area but i'm just going to kind of cross check in this area and just to make sure, okay, you're looking good. You're looking good. All right, so now we're getting there, y'all. Horizontal. And work from one side to the other until we're done. Okay. And last piece on this side. And look at here, we're almost done, guys. Know that I've cut there. So I'm going to come over here. New piece. Bada bang, bada bang. And don't forget to get this corner. So I like to drag this down and come on the side slightly just to make sure that everything is blending. Okay. And I'm going to even come into this little corner and do like a little pivot in here towards the face to make sure that we did not leave anything too long okay and now this is our last piece now some of you guys have learned this um cut where we drop kind of like a little bang down okay we can do that either way we're going to go back and check it but since i have such a small piece now I'm just going to continue the method that I was just doing, okay? This is the last section. 
okay? This little area right here, okay? So just like we just did, comb this on back, and I'm going to adjust just a little bit because here she is. She's doing what she does. And I'm going to get this top section cut. There we are. And this is my last section. I'm just going to let it lean back so you guys can see what I'm doing here. But take a look. This is the 90 degree elevation for the front. So if her head is here, and I have to fix this, I apologize for this technical difficulty. But we're gonna get through this. I got Miss Janice in my arms. She's safe. <laughs> Miss Janice, last piece. Be great for me now. All right. So here we go. Head straight up so you guys can see that this right here in this front is our 90 degree elevation for the front. You see that? So that is very important. If you do this, you're going to make the hair too, too long in the front. Okay, so this is the 90 degree elevation because it is dipping down. Okay, that is very important. Or well, that front, once again, will be too long. So now I'm going to come, I think I went down the center. So instead of working my way from there to there, I did work down the center. So I just got to make sure that I get, continue to work over. So you see that? Ninety in the front that will give me my four inches in the front if not i will end up with five or six inches in the front of the hair usually if you um don't elevate properly it gives you about one inch a half an inch to a one inch longer now if that's on my size my client will notice that is if, that, if it is around the perimeter the outline of the haircut people will notice they will notice if the hair is supposed to be layered and you have one inch somewhere and you know, one inch longer somewhere or the hair supposed to be flipping up a certain way, it's going to be too heavy in one area. So just understand that if you over direct slightly, you may end up with an inch longer or shorter in an area. And I just point cut that little area because I saw a few little peaks. Now I have to finish this one little, last little corner here and we'll be ready to rock and roll. my last piece okay. got Now I'm just going to kind of go through this top area and just double check and ensure and I'm going to cross check horizontally a few little okay 
So I want to work my and 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 actually so this area that I just cut. I'm just gonna go across that and just double check. Boom. So guys, I will do another video of us doing this cut for the practical exam. Okay. And last, which I already checked. All right, all right, all right. Once you complete the haircut at the exam, then you're going to be asked about you're not quite done. So when you get done um, with the haircut, keep your comb out, okay? If you finish early, I would suggest that you go through and check your work, double check, cross check your work to ensure that it is even, especially if you finish and you got time, there's no need to waste that time. Go back and cross check your work and make sure that you are even. The, the biggest thing when it comes to this haircut for the exam is that you actually use your shears. And you actually use your razor. So if nothing else, the way that I taught you guys to cut up with the, the, the razor in the back and go ahead and drop down your size when you get to the height of the size with your shears. That way you can get credit for that haircut of, for using your shears and using your razor. So that's why I like that four section party and I like doing the halo subsections uh, or the horseshoe subsections as I work my way up for that for the cut for the exam. Now, after you finish cutting or if the time elapses, then they're going to approach you. The examiner is going to say, please hand me your shears. I mean, please hand me your, your comb. They're going to use the comb to check the haircut. Then they're going to tell you to please clean up your area. Okay? What they mean by that, you're going to take, after they check, you're going to take your shears. You're going to take anything that's left up here. You can go ahead and discard it inside of your items to be disinfected container so shear razor shears your combs that you were using and at this time you can actually take your cool down thermal iron and place it in your items to be disinfected container as well i'm going to take these guys right here these extra clips i'm going to go ahead and get rid of those i'm going to also remove any hair off of my station now I just kind of use this towel and dust off my um, table with I don't want to start wiping my clients face with that so I want to take this guy and put it in the soiled linens okay I'm going to hit my hand sanitizer and then I'm just going to kind of check my towel okay I'm going to take my con around and I'm going to look and I'm going to use my towel and shake it off. And I'm going to clean off any excess hair on my client. I'm going to look on the face area and remove any excess hair off of the face. Okay? Because you got to think about this, guys. In real life, when you are with your um, sending your client back, let's imagine your client come to the salon on their lunch break. And they have to go back to work afterwards. So it's going to be your responsibility to ensure that you're not sending your client back to work with hair, itching their back, itching their neck. So you want to make sure that you do clean all of that residue of excess hair off of your client. Okay? Um, no, everything does not have to be out of, you know, you just want to make sure that you do not have any hair remaining on your station. And you want to make sure that you don't have any hair on your client's face. 
and, and the, on their cape and on their towel. You want to wipe that off, okay, or, or shake it off. You do not have to change the cape. You do not have to redrape. You're just shaking the hair off, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and sweep up my area, and I'm going to make sure that I get all of the hair cleaned up. So, so they're going to, so that's, and I'm going to go ahead and clean up the hair off the floor. So there's no need for me to wipe the table off and end up with hair all over the place by sweeping up first. So I'm going to clean off my work area, clean off my client's face, their neck, and their, make sure there's no excess hair on the cape or the towel, and then I'm going to sweep up my floor okay and on the floor you're going to have um brooms that are going to be located in the exam area so you do not have to necessarily have to bring one it is your option if you want to bring um uh uh one of the little small ones but i was told when we went to the conference um the exam conference the practical exam conference with the group that you did not need to bring one okay that you do not need to bring a broom but because they will be if um be at the exam all right, so with that being said, that basically concludes the haircut portion of the exam.